Good morning, and welcome to this Christmas Day worship at St. Mark Lutheran Church in Salem, Oregon. On behalf of the congregation, welcome to this festive day. Christmas Day service is more of a quiet, contemplative service. We hope that this will be a blessing for you. Our prelude today, a Christmas prelude by Charles Callahan. Many ages from the time when God created the heavens and the earth and then formed man and woman in his own image. Long after the great flood, when God made the rainbow shine forth the sign of the covenant. 21 centuries from the time 
the promise was given to Abraham and Sarah, 13 centuries after Moses led the people of Israel out of Egypt and Miriam danced in freedom, 1,100 years from the time of Ruth and the judges, 1,000 years from the anointing of David as king, in fulfillment of the times and years and months and days discerned by the prophets in the 194th Olympiad, the 752nd year from the foundation of the city of Rome, the 42nd year of the reign of Octavian Augustus. Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to sanctify the world by his most merciful coming, being conceived by the Holy Spirit and nine months of growth in the womb of his mother, now in our own time, is the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, God made flesh. Emmanuel, God with us, interrupt and open our eyes to the wonder of this day, that we might catch a glimpse of your glory in the simplicity of these moments. May your light shine. <clears throat> Emmanuel, God with us, Interrupt and soften our hearts to the message of this hour, that we might turn toward you and have the way prepared in us for your coming. May, May your, your light, light shine. Emmanuel, God with us interrupt and open our minds to truly listen to all who speak and sing this day, that we might hear your voice cry out from many lips. May, May your light shine. Emmanuel, God with us, interrupt and fill our spirits with the courage to admit when we are lost, and the insight to recognize that we have been found. May your light shine. Emmanuel, God with us, with eyes opened, hearts softened, minds listening, and spirits full, we rejoice that you interrupt what we have in mind in order to bring into being something more than we dare imagine. May your light shine. Amen. God became one of us so that we could see the face of love, hear the voice of peace, be touched by the hand of grace, know the heart of mercy. God comes to us, offering us forgiveness and peace. We pray. You, you came, came in weakness, weakness, mighty God. Forgive our grasping for power. You, you came, came in humility, humility Prince of Peace. Forgive, forgive us for wanting more than others. others. You came in poverty, everlasting one. Forgive us when we do not see your family sleeping in our streets. You came in gentleness, wonderful counselor. Forgive us for the anger we speak and the pain we cause. Child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. Forgive us, heal us, make us new. Then we will join the angels in singing your praise this Christmas day and all the days to come.
Break forth into singing, children of God, for the babe comes to comfort us like a mother rocking her son to sleep, like a father wiping away the tears of his daughter. For the sake of God's Son, which has been born into this world this day, God forgives you all your sins. Renewed by the Spirit, let us live in hope and joy. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, sent from heaven above, be with you all. And also with you. Hymn 288, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. Good Christian Friends Rejoice, with heart and soul and voice, give me heed to what we say. Christ is born today, us and us before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today, Christ is born today. Good Christian friends rejoice, with heart and soul and voice, now we hear of endless bliss. Jesus Christ was born for this. He has opened heaven's door, and we are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Call me Christian friends, rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now we need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save, calls you one and calls you all to gain the everlasting home. Christ was born to save, Christ was born to save. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. All-powerful and unseen God, the coming of your light into our world has brightened weary hearts with peace. Call us out of darkness and empower us to proclaim the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson is from Isaiah, the 62nd chapter. Upon your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted sentinels. All day and all night they shall never be silent. 
You who remind the Lord, take no rest, and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it renowned throughout the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, I will not again give your grain to be food for your enemies, and foreigners shall not drink the wine for which you have labored. But those who garner it shall eat and praise the Lord, and those who gather it shall drink it in my holy courts. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up an ensign over the peoples. The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say to daughter Zion, see your salvation comes, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord and you shall be called sought out, a city not forsaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From Psalm 97. Almighty and loving God, on this day when we celebrate the birth of your Son, we testify with joy. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. As we rehearse again the stories of signs in the stars and choir of angels in the heaven, we echo the ancient words of the psalm. The heavens proclaim your righteousness, and all the people behold your glory. As we glimpse the perfect image of the invisible God, we see again that all who make their boast in the worthless idols are put to shame. As we receive the gift of a Savior, we announce with grateful hearts, Light dawns for the righteous, and joy for the upright in heart. Alleluia. Amen. The second lesson is from Titus 3. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken by Quirinius, while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel 
a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. All who had heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this Christmas day in which we rejoice in the birth of your Son. May the birth of that Christ child be made real within our hearts as we feast upon your word this day. In Christ's name, amen. It is roughly about 100 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem. And according to Google Maps, it takes... It would take about 33 to 34 hours to walk, not counting stops for rest. You would need that. And of course, Google does not factor in marauding bandits, inns with no room, or full-term pregnancies. The city of Bend is about 100 miles from Salem. Imagine setting out on a hiking trip to Bend fully pregnant. According to Luke, this is exactly what Joseph and Mary undertake. It is not as though they had a choice. There is no vacation spent at the house in Sun River or Black Butte or at the coast. Caesar Augustus has spoken, and like it or not, everybody has to register in the town of their ancestry. Joseph lives in Nazareth, but has roots in Bethlehem, and that is that. In those endless hours of walking, imagine wondering if Mary's water might break at any moment. Imagine going on this dangerous, exhausting journey just to fill out a couple of government forms. Our waits at the DMV can hardly compare. Interesting that historians can find little evidence of this particular census, but for Luke, that's not the point. For Luke, this decree from Rome and the journey of the two peasants from Galilee are not primarily geographical or even historical. It is about God, about the new thing God is doing in, the, in our world. The question for Luke is where do people like Mary and Joseph find hope. These two are poor and defenseless peasants. Think of the refugees fleeing Central America. At the whim of whatever Caesar or governments happen to mandate, Caesar issues a decree and Joseph and Mary have to pack up everything and head south to Judea. There's a remarkable painting that illustrates this quite well. It is entitled, The Numbering at Bethlehem, painted by Pieter Bruegel in 1566. The thing about this image is that you can hardly see Mary, Joseph, and their unborn child in the painting. Look carefully at the lower center right of the picture. You see a woman on a donkey with a bent-over man leading them. They're almost anonymous. Before Rome, they are, in fact, nobodies. Their hope is not in Caesar, nor the president, nor any world leader. Their hope is in the God of Israel, who is with them even when it seems they walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The more powerful and affluent a society becomes, the more we hope in ourselves. 
we become more confident of our strength and begin to imagine ourselves as those who need no hope outside ourselves. But if faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, then we soon lose faith because the things we see, hold, and store up are simply more satisfying. As long as we keep a tight grip on this life, we no longer become capable of opening our hands in prayer. Instead of identifying with these two peasants, Mary and Joseph, we become like little Caesars, not dispensing pizza, but dispensing decrees and enjoying lifestyles that make it ever harder for the economically challenged in the world. In bringing about this new thing, the birth of God's own Son in this world, God's preference is with the poor. Now, it happens every so often in history and in our personal lives that we are, as it were, booted off the throne. The pandemic has become one big boot. We are left realizing that maybe our hope in our own strength is but a sham. In such moments, by God's grace, we may wake up and realize that we are all Joseph's and Mary's, compelled to travel the weary road of social distancing by the Caesar called COVID-19. Yet, trusting in the one who walks with us. No matter how weary the road is for us these days, for those with eyes to see, this road leads to Bethlehem and a manger where a surprising hope waits. Paul tells the Corinthians, We felt that we had received the sentence of death so that we would rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. The pandemic road is like one long, endless advent. This is not a four-week journey. It is months and months long. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, in his Letters from Prison, writes, Life in a prison cell may well be compared to Advent. One waits, hopes, and does this, that, or the other, things that are of no real consequence. The door is shut and can be opened only from the outside. Perhaps being shut in quarantine or social distancing is a kind of Advent, waiting, hoping, and doing many things that seem to have no real consequence. What does it mean for us when Christmas arrives? A jail sentence is over when the door is opened from the outside and the prisoner is set free. Or, as in Bonhoeffer's case, the door opens and leads to his execution. Advent ends today at Christmas, but the advent of this pandemic will continue on for months Sadly, many will die along the way. Many will suffer. When the advent of this pandemic ends, what will that Christmas be like? It won't be a single day, like waking up to presents under the tree, or a prison door swung open, or a day when everything is normal again. On the night Jesus was born, it wasn't that everything suddenly became safe and peaceful. The Roman Empire continued. War, disease, and poverty were not eliminated. In fact, Mary and Joseph and the babe had to flee for their lives to Egypt. And yet, a new door on the journey toward salvation and hope had opened. God came to earth to live and die as one of us, and teach us about a different kind of living, one whose reliance was on God. No longer confident of humankind's invincibility, no longer believing Caesar's empty promise of peace and that we've turned the corner, hope awaits us. Maybe we are ready again for the hope and wonder of Bethlehem. Like Joseph, we are exhausted by the forced march of greedy empires. But, like pregnant Mary, we suddenly realize that we have been carrying the one true 
hope all along. Emmanuel, God with us. In Christ's birth, there is no longer any prison or lockdown or pandemic that can take our truest freedom from us. Our truest freedom is not our rights, whatever right or possession we may claim. Our truest freedom lies in our intentional journey with God, revealed to us through the birth of the babe lying in the manger. In the midst of World War II, Bonhoeffer wrote from prison, May God in his mercy lead us through these times, but above all, may he lead us to himself. That is my prayer for you as we gather together on this one of the strangest of Christmas days, socially distanced from one another, that the God of all journeys might direct your path back toward the one true hope, to the only one who can open prison doors, Christ our Lord, born this day. Amen.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing was created. The life that was in Him became light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. To all who receive Him, who believe in Him, he gives power to become children of God. The Word became flesh, a man named Jesus. He lived among us, full of grace and truth. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. In his name God has sent the Holy Spirit to teach us and to remind us of all that he has said. We believe that because he lives, we, we shall live, live also to the glory of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yours is the glory, light in the word, word in the silence, warmth in the cold, life in the cell, love at the threshold. Yours is the glory, beginning and end. Yours is the glory, light over Bethlehem, mother in labor, a baby's first cry, shepherds at the door, God in the straw. Yours is the glory, beginning and end. We who have so much to enjoy this day, turn now to God with prayers for those who have much less. Let us pray. For those who will spend this holy day in the hospital or care facility, and especially for any who know it will be their last Christmas on this earth, and for those who are struggling for their next breath, O oh God, hear our prayers. For children who will spend this day hungry or in poverty, and for parents who experience the pain of not being able to provide, O oh God, hear our prayers. For those who must work today while we relax, police and ambulance officers, nurses and doctors, members of fire departments, and those who maintain public transport. O oh God, hear our prayers. For those who once believed in Christ and who knew the meaning of Christmas joy, but who have now edged away into cynicism and darkness. O oh God, hear our prayers. For those who have never believed, but who on this day are finding their hearts stirred by the Holy Spirit and challenged to take the leap of faith. O oh God, hear our prayers. For any among our family or friends who are facing personal crisis or trying to deal with a tragedy at this Christmas season, O oh God, hear our prayers. For those celebrating Christmas distance from family and friends, O oh God, hear our prayers. Lord of the universe, through your true child, born of a young woman, you came to share our humanity. Renew us by your holy coming and make us children of love that we may embody your word and be agents of mercy and peace. Amen. Christ's birth heralded the coming of peace to the world. May the peace that is Christ be with you always. And also with you. We sing the offertory infant holy, infant lowly, number 276.
Let us pray. Gracious God, you came to us as one unknown, bringing joy and salvation to the earth. Nourish us at your banquet table, that with all who welcome your birth, we may proclaim your peace, revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. May the good Lord be with you. Lift your hearts to God in praise. May the Lord be with you too. To the Lord our hearts we raise. Gloria in excelsis Deo. We sing a new song to you, O God of our salvation, for you have done marvelous things since the beginning of time. You have spoken your word, and your light shines in our darkness. Glory to you, O God. Glory to you, O God. The seas are thundering with praise, the rivers are clapping their hands, the hills ring out with gladness, and the trees are shouting their joy. Glory to you, O God. Glory to you, O God. Your Son rules in truth and justice, victorious and merciful is He. We praise Your Majesty lying in a manger, Jesus Christ, born of Mary, lauded by angels. Glory to You, O God. Glory to You, O God. On the night before He died, Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to His disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is My body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of Me. Again after supper He took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Send your Spirit on us and on this meal of wonder. In this bread give us the body of Christ. With this cup reveal the grace of your Son, Jesus, made known to the whole earth your steadfast love. Glory to you, O God. Glory to you, O God. In these dark days, bring the dawn of your righteousness to birth. Hold the living and the dead in your hands. In your good time, awaken the sleeping animals and revive the dormant plants with your life-giving spirit. Glory to you, O God. Glory to you, O God. With trumpets and horns and harps, with faithful on earth and the hosts of heaven, we sing to your splendor, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God most high, light of the earth and judge of the world, today and forever, amen. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. We sing the Lamb of God. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood keep and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us from your very self with the body and blood of Christ. Through this mystery, send forth, send us forth to proclaim your promise to a world in need through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Sending him, love has come, number 292.
May the word that Mary brought to birth carry you into new and abundant life. Amen. Amen. May the word that Joseph cradled in his arms enfold you with love and strength. Amen. May the word that angels proclaimed in song bring harmony to our world. Amen. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Peace to God's people on earth. Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God. Our postlude, Improvisation on He is Born by Michael Joseph.